How's it going, everybody? So this is going to be the third chapter of my frame build, frame build number two. And when I left off last, I had gotten the uh, chromoly section there that I was going to take to a buddy of mine to get bent and ended up getting them bent. I've got them cut down here um, but anyway yeah we got them worked out pretty nice. Uh, this buddy of mine Tony he owns a fabrication shop called T-Fab and I'll put a link or something there in the, the, in the descriptions but uh, yeah, anyway he's got a nice hydraulic bender and um, well, basically what we did is, um, you know, we we're going to try it at first, and he's like, well, you know, normally what I'll do, I'm, you know, I don't have a mandrel, so we packed it full of uh, media blasting sand, I guess you could say. It was kind of a fine sand, so just taped off either end there, and we, you know, taped off one end, packed it full, taped it up, and then stuck it in the bender. And um, Anyway, yeah, he, built, he bent the first one, and then I bent the uh, second one there, so... You know, I think it came out really nice and there's not any wrinkles or you can barely even see where the, you know, the bend started and stopped. But, um, you know, I'd say we, used, we did a four and a half inch radius there. So uh, it seemed like it's going to work out. It's, gonna, it's going to differ slightly from what I had in my uh, original drawing, but not a lot. Um, probably this kind of this portion right in here, the apex portion is going to be a little closer to the tire than the top. But, I think so. it's going to work out pretty nice either which way. So, um, you know, kind of one challenge I had with my little tube notcher here was um, how I was going to cut it. You know, I couldn't cut it from a downward angle. You know, well, first thing, you know, the notcher, it, it basically, you know, your the tube is designed to go in and, you know, cut it at 90 degree, and then this thing will rotate over to about 60 degrees, but I needed this to more or less go at a, you know, straight you know, parallel to the, you know, the whole saw to the tube there that we're cutting, so um, that obviously wasn't going to work out, so I decided just to, you know, I took a piece of just flat metal and I was going to just make my own and, um, you know, can't do it down in a downward way because it's, you know, the, I figured it would hit the base and then I knocked it up the top way as well and this is going to hit the edge of my um, my drill press there so figured this is just like this is going to be the easiest way and then I'm gonna uh, just use my luckily my little uh, Dewalt cordless drill there it fits the chuck fits fine up onto the the hole saw there so or the shaft there for the whole that the whole saw connects to, and I'm basically just going to build a little fixture for this. Um, I ordered some aluminum on eBay for like five bucks for a um, basically some aluminum stock, and I'm going to just you know cut it with my whole saw and um, just have some little mounts and got some of these little brackets here that are you know for 31 8 there for a handlebar for a broken set of arrow bars so I'm just gonna take the aluminum stock and drill and tap it and bolt those and then it should you know should be able to just go off of the existing you know but three or four bolts you know to kind of secure this in place and you know get it figured up and mocked up and uh, should should work out really nice to drill those so that's kind of you know I wanted to kind of get this whole fork thing finished up but that's that's going to take a little while and so um, well I should be able to have it you know at least full on going into it by the fourth week. I'm, I'm actually I'm going to try to update this each week and we'll kind of just see how we're going you know week to week so um, some weeks are maybe a lot this finished some weeks maybe not a lot and, um, this week it seems like there's not a lot but kind of been chasing down parts and trying to do some things so it's not all just cutting and welding, but we'll be getting into quite a bit of that here shortly. Um, so, I, I picked up quite a few new tools that I needed. Um, I got some more hole saws. These are the Milwaukee hole dozers. So, 
don't know, US made. I got a, another inch and a quarter that I tore up the Harbor Freight one, and then I needed a, uh, I think this is two and three eighths or 60 millimeters, which is the same size as my, the, basically the bottom bracket shell there. So I needed uh, basically a hole saw for that to miter the, you know, the, the C tube down tube and, you know, whatnot. So that should make a little quicker work of it than filing it. And then I got the inch and a quarter um, bit there for the, to do the fork legs. And there's, I don't know, I may, I needed one that was kind of in between, that's about a 37-ish millimeter. Um, I couldn't find anything, so I might see if I can still track something down, or otherwise I'm just going to use my, uh, the, uh, I think I've got a 35 and I've got one that's a little bigger, so I may just, I don't know, finagle that into shape if I can, so. Um, yeah, I got those. Um, I got a, made a little Harbor Freight run today and got this little uh, self-centering drill press jig. And uh, this thing was only $9.99, but it's, you know, it's kind of got a deep groove, just bolts to the drill press um, plate there. And then, you know, basically you just run your your drill and you know center it up in this little groove here and then you know from there it's gonna I'm gonna have to drill like six holes in this thing so um, you know a couple for the chain stay one for the top tube and down tube and then two for the little um, the little eccentric bottom bracket piece there so another thing I picked up I've got a couple little stainless steel set screws got these at Home Depot also we'll, Five sixteenths, so I figured that would be a looked like a just from the naked eye looked like a, a good size. And pretty much, I guess what I'm going to plan on doing is either weld a couple nuts, you know, after I drill the holes, drill, just either weld a couple nuts there, and then you know, just thread those in, or I may just cut some. You know, I've got quite a few chunks of just scrap metal. I may just drill tap. Probably just the nut deal will be easier, but I don't know. I'll that's probably something I'll drill the holes and then it's probably going to be a once the frame's more or less done because there's times where I need to rest this on a flat surface and I don't want to have you know some nuts or whatever underneath there kind of screwing things up so um, yeah I got that little thing a little jig and then I got um, just a little cheapy drill press vise this was $16.99 minus the 20% off coupon. I don't know. It's pretty, pretty chintzy, but I think it's you know better than just clamping things down on the uh, device like I've been doing. So, you know, some of the other tools, um, you know, that I didn't have last time I did my frame build was my little, um, my portable bandsaw, which that thing comes in really handy for, uh, cutting cutting tubes and you know pre-cutting stuff a lot quicker than a hacksaw which is what I've always used before so um, you know a little more precise and a little quicker work of some things so that'll definitely be a nice little time saver um, my uh, my actual tube notcher here I've done a couple little mods to it I made a video a while back that I just kind of welded a base plate here so that's definitely a lot more stable, a lot quicker to hook it right up to my little drill press there. and um, So it's kind of nice. You know, my drill press, this has been, things really worked out well. It's just kind of a real basic YOB. Um, you know, kind of an interesting story from that. Uh, a buddy of mine, Greg Romero, who's the, you know, old double A BMX pro champion that, you know, BMX Olympic coach, you know, for the past couple Olympics that he actually gave me that drill press. He used to live here in Oklahoma City and he, uh, you know, was moving back to California and asked if I needed a drill press and I said, oh, yeah, sure, you know, I'm not going to pass up any free tools. So, uh, yeah, I've got that thing and that thing I've been, you know, it's worked well since I've had it. So, great little tool. Another tool that I've got that, you know, been using quite a bit um, is my little, I got this little CK Worldwide 
tick torch and this thing just for you know smaller stuff it's just you know it's awesome it's got the, the flex hose and yeah you know it's so much more this makes a huge difference in the torch I used from when I on my last frame build so really uh, eager to use this you know normally I'll use the shorter back cap but I've been putting this thing through the through the um, you know, through the ringer lately, trying to, you know, building up a, a metal storage rack thing, and, you know, I think this thing's rated at 125 or, you know, something like that, maybe 130 amps, and um, I've definitely been exceeding that a few times. It's gotten really hot, so, so I've kind of taken a break on the rack thing, so I don't want to smoke this thing before I get to use it on this frame, so, um, yeah, I'm really excited to um, use this on some really some of this thinner wall stuff and see how that goes and I did I've had the, the decals on my uh, got some decals made up for the frame and I uh, put them on my uh, other I have on my uh, my first bike I built I put them set on there and looks pretty decent definitely makes a difference rather than just riding some basic plain bike around there as opposed to something with decals so uh, yeah that's all I've got for this week and um, y'all yeah, should be definitely uh, should have my materials to build this little fork fixture um, notching device thing here so I should have that here probably early next week so hopefully we'll have this fork started and underway and maybe even have some of the frames started so until till next time uh, thanks for watching